thank you once again for giving me this opportunity. I think we are switching gears and we are coming to <coughs> one of the more interesting aspects of uh, practicing refractive surgery. And peop how many here are doing intacts on a regular basis? I think very few. In the, if you already have an FS200, I think you should, this is a good uh, reason to start because this is one thing that gives us a lot of happiness when you see a patient improve uh, very well. So how does intacts work? They're basically uh, PMMA rings which are inserted into corneal stroma and they produce a flattening effect as you can see here in this picture. So there's a central flattening resulting in the correction of the irregular astigmatism. And uh, initially it was actually uh, 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 FDA approved for myopia but it works very well when in, um, this is the next, sorry. In uh, patients with, um, <laughs> patients with catechonus and this is, um, this I just want to show you because, so this has made my life a lot easier. Using a femtosecond laser to create the channels has made it a lot easier and the entire time I take is actually almost, uh, what, five to six minutes. The second ring takes a little bit longer to go in. I don't use the, uh, the Y fork to open out the channels. I use the Intax itself to, uh, uh, to open the, uh, uh, the incision and push it in. And it just takes about four to five minutes, and um, the results are really very good. <laughs> so um, I here I'm going to talk to you about my uh, results with Intax SK. So how was it? This is it different from Intax. Um, the Intax normally were placed at seven millimeters, whereas the SK was placed at six millimeters. The reason being, um, I'm sorry. I'm, Reason being that you want a better refractive effect, you have to close, go closer to the visual axis. So it's uh, definitely more, uh, more commonly used in severe cases of keratoconus, where you need to have more correction, higher refractive correction. <laughs> this is the one which goes forward, is it? Okay. So indications in our case were patients with poor vision with spectacles were intolerant to contact lens wear, keratometric readings of greater than 52 diopters, and stage two to three keratoconus, patients with clear corneas and a spectacle cylinder of 4.5 diopters. Patients with central uh, corneal scar, collagen vascular diseases, pregnant or nursing women, and patients with recurrent corneal uh, erosions or corneal dystrophies and A2P were uh, um, not included. So pre-surgical planning for keratoconus would consist of uh, transposing your uh, negative cylinder into a positive cylinder format. And you also have to locate on topography and pentacamp the position of the cone. And based on that, you select whether you go in for a, uh, what type of seg uh, segment you're going to choose. If you go for a symmetric, uh, 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 a symmetric uh, one, if you have a central cone, and asymmetric if it is a decentered cone. And again, the incision placement, to make it very simple, is on the steeper axis. And so this is how uh, the, the plan looks like. So you can see that this is um, at 25 degrees. The incision here is at 25 degrees, and the refraction here is minus 7, 115. So it's exactly transposed, and you can see that the steeper axis is along 25 degrees, and this is where the incision is, and the rings are placed on either side. <coughs> okay. So this is again, and I think because of the stretching, it has uh, uh, changed a little bit. So here again, you can see mm -hmm. this is a yeah. cylinder at four point, minus 4.75, 135, and the axis is at 45 degrees. So it, it, it's very important that the refraction matches with our uh, uh, picture what you get. So in this case, because uh, it was, uh, there was only a cylindrical error, only a single segment was used, and we used a 0.4 SK. And they, uh, in the, using a femtosecond laser, we made a, a, a tunnel at three, a six millimeters and 7.3 millimeters in size. So uh, now, during planning, you have to find out whether the cone is centered or decentered. Depending on that, you'll choose the type of segments, whether symmetric or asymmetric. And then you have to locate uh, and verify the positive cylinder axis. Suppose on the topography that you find that the axis is 10 or 15 degrees uh, uh, away from your spectacle cylinder, then you have to verify it using the posterior float, the pachymetry, and the peripheral flattening. So the segment selection again depends upon whether it is symmetric or asymmetric, which I've already mentioned. And after you have verified, you can decide uh, about what type of 
uh, ring that you want, whether you want a 0.4 or 0.45. The procedure <coughs> is done under topical anesthesia using a FS200 wave light laser with an outer diameter of 7.3 and 6 millimeters. The stromal tunnel is done at a depth of 70 millimeters, so it's important that you measure the pachymetry all around in the periphery. <coughs> and this is the first day post-op. So after, in my uh, uh, hospital, what we do is after the first day, we give one day gap. On the third post-op day, we do the uh, 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 cross-linking. So we did a, a cohort study of 34 eyes of 31 patients, and uh, the outcomes uh, were analyzed. Here in our study, that we had a cylinder of mean cylinder of six, minus six diopters, which dropped down to uh, 2.66 post intacts. And the sphere dropped from 2 to 0.48. The steep ketometry dropped from 45.75 to 41. And uh, 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 K2s dropped from 51 to 48. This is, um, and as you can see, the incision location. You can see the cylinder is minus 7, and the incision location at, at 65 degrees. And this is a post op picture showing the anti segment OCT pictures as well. And this patient also underwent a trans epithelial cross linking. So, some of the results I'd like to share this here you can see a, a patient who underwent a cross linking showing a, a reduction in the K max. The pre and post op intacts showing a drop in cylinder from minus 9 to minus 2 cylinder. You can see the difference map. Again, a reduction in uh, four diopters of uh, the cylinder. This is uh, a pre and post uh, in intacts showing a drop from 7.5 to minus 4.5 on spectacle. So, this is one of my very recent cases had a minus 4 with minus 8 cylinder and a, a cone of uh, a character cone is grading of 3. And she underwent uh, intacts. You can see the plan here. And the pre and post op also showed a significant, you can see the uh, difference map showing a difference of from minus 8, she dropped down to 4.5. This is again one of my recent patients showing a Keltocone is grade 2 and the pre-op planning and the drop in cylinder from minus 4 to minus 1.5. Some of these patients also after undergoing intacts have undergone topoguided PRK and some of your patients have even got just a 0.5. So in a combination of these two techniques really work well along with uh, cross-linking. So 5.5, again dropping down to 3.25. So in our series, I think majority of the patients, the reduction was about 50%. And the average reduction in cylinder was about 3.75 in most of our patients. And majority of the patients had a conventional epithelium off CXL. Only two patients had an epithelium on CXL. And, um, when we compared it with our topo-guided PRK, we found that the patients with higher grade of uh, cylinder, uh, this definitely works better. As you can see, from 6.13, they dropped down to 2.4 in one month. There is a slight drift to 2.7 at the end of six months. But uh, in topo-guided PRK, which we did for lower cylinders, the results have been very good, and, but it's been more consistent, as you can see, from 2.7, they dropped down to 1.36, and then further down to 0.75. But both results were, uh, were comparable. So um, the uncorrected visual equity improved from 0.89 to 0.61 Lagmar units. The steep characterometric value decreased from 52 to 47, and spherical values decreased by 4.5 diopters, and cylindrical values decreased by 3.5 diopters. So in patients who have an advanced cone where spectacles do not work and the patients are not tolerant to contact lenses and do not want to shift to mini scleral lenses, I think it's worthwhile trying these uh, cases because the results are very good, excellent, and we have been consistently getting very good results with these uh, with intacts. And people who have not started, I think you should really do it because the quality of vision is very good, just like how they wear a contact lens because a lot of abrasions go down and you can even top it up with the topo guided PRK at a later date, and so that you can give them the best possible visual uh, correction. And particularly because these patients are extremely young patients and they have their life ahead of them. And um, one point I forgot to mention in the slide is that none of my patients had any complications like extrusion, intrusion, or any such uh, uh, problems. 
One patient who had a severe atopy had vascularization along the channels, but uh, on starting on steroids, they regressed, and uh, he's on a follow-up of about four to five years, and he's doing very well. Thank you.